The Cannington Jig by John Dipper, one of my favourite English fiddle players. Uh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful, melodic, gentle musician and uh, a great player of this type of tune. Uh, it's got more than a, a whiff of the Morris about it. It's just lovely and bouncy. The, uh, the groove, the jig groove that we're looking at here is a dotted groove, for a better word. Um, think antelope, antelope, rather than elephant, elephant. Let's do that on an open A string. Antelope, antelope. And you'll notice that there's a little bit of air between the an and the t, the first two notes. It's not antelope, antelope, it's antelope, antelope. Three, four. So that's the, the groove that we're in. We're in G major, one sharp, F sharps. Here's the A part slowly. Three and a four. question and answer structure, but it's quite cleverly disguised. Let's take the first phrase, which I am starting at the beginning of the piece with an anticipation on a B. So not straight on the head of the beat, but just before it with a pulse in the bow. And it comes down a scale and back up to the B. Starts on the B. Three, four. And then up to the D, down to the F sharp, another Do, Re, Mi, and resolve to the G. Here's the whole of the phrase. Three, four. Three, four. And we're going to hear a lot of resonance in this tune. That phrase finishing with the G on the D string. Which sets off the harmonic on the G string. I wonder if we might see that here. Not really, but you can hear it. One more time, that first phrase. It's the key phrase. Three, four. And just while we're on that key phrase, let's look at the other way of getting into it. Clean on the B, and we'll put a flick on it. So right on the head of the note. Try that with a flick on the first note and square on the beat. Three, four. And then the last way we get into it is by slurring out of an A. And because now I've got a slur of an open string to a first finger, I really want to flick it. Three, four. Three, four. So those are the various ways we get to play that phrase, different ways of starting it. Here's the first answer. It starts on an A. It scales up four notes to a D. And then we get a triad coming down. So finger patterns, threes and ones, but then down to an E. So continuing that 
finger pattern, threes and ones and threes. From that E, it's a Do, Re, Mi, up to D, and another triad coming down. So it mirrors the first half. Mirrors. It reflects the first half. It's the same as the first half of this phrase. Hear the whole phrase and then I'll do it in two bits. Three, four. So here's the first bit. I am starting on an A, but I am anticipating the A and cutting it. So I start on the upbeat, three and a four and tum pum. And I cut so that you can definitely hear the one of the, uh, of the bar. Three, four. Grand. And now I'm going to scale up to the D and then come out of that with a triad. And it sounds three, four. Nice resonant note, three, four. And then the second half of it, continue the finger pattern down to the E, scale up four notes to the open A, and come down the triad, three, four. Four. And I'm going to stick a little bit of um, lazy bowing in that as well. So when I cross over to the A string, I'm not going to leave the D string, but not by anchoring the G. Not this. Oh, I kind of like that. Instead, I'm going to emphasize the D triad by, as I, after I've come up the scale, E, F sharp, G, my finger will go, will go back to the F sharp and I'll play that against the open A. Just wait to play. Try that, nice and steady. Two, three, four. So now let's try the whole of the first answer. Three, four. Three, four. Grand. The key phrase and the first answer start in the key phrase with an anticipated B. Three, four. string at the end of that. Let's try that again. Three, four. Grand. Then we get the key phrase again, when it will start with a flick, straighten on that, a B with a flick. Three, four. with that resonant G and then we're going to set up a drone the first the second answer starting with a drone and we do that just by bow plucking the G and the D it goes on forever what I mean by a bow pluck is that you play those strings and leave them usually we do that in a crush but here I've got much longer but it's it's leaving them cleanly so you don't choke them. Now, I've got the bow on the A string, but they're still ringing. And so we do that with an anticipation. Three, four. And a pulse in the bow. And we then play the high D, the octave D on the A string, also with an anticipation for one. Try those two. Three, four. Three, four. Grand. And then from there, we just come scaling down to F sharp and resolve to the G. 
and with the F sharp using the Jerry technique, create a lower mordant. Let's try that. From the anticipations, three, four. Three, four. Grand. Let's try the key phrase and the second answer, starting on a B with a flick. Three, four. <laughs> Without an anticipation. Three, four. Three, four. Grand. And then to play the A part around again, use the A anacrusis and go into a flick. Here are two A parts with an anticipated start on a B. Three, four. Okay, let's have a look at the B part. Again, I'll play it nice and steady twice through without the ornamentation. I'm going to start on that note that we've just finished on and use that as an anacrusis coming up a scale. So after three, one, two, three. hiccup in the middle but we'll correct that as we uh, as we go through this so I'm going to play on the head of the B part so no anacrusis and I'm going to think of this um, key phrase now starting on the C it's a uh, it's going to be a crotchet we come up a scale to E and then it's three blind mice from E three blind mice from D and finish on the A three Four. Three, four. It's finishing with open strings and ringing third fingers all over the place. It's a wonderful piece of writing. This time let's start from the G as an anacrusis, but we're going to be lazy with the bow. We don't leave that G, we're anchoring it and we just play it all the way through to the C so that we've got the C with that G. Here we go. After three. One, two, three. And I'm going to finish the last note, I'm going to finish by putting open strings together. Let's try that. Two, three. One more. Two, three. Grand. And in the middle of that, on that D, I'll use the Jerry technique to put a lower mordant. Just that. And one. And one. Let's try from the anacrusis. We'll have the whole of the 
key phrase. Two, three. Grand. The answer starts on a B. Starts on a B and then we come up to the C and the D. Back to the B. It's disguised Frere Jaca. And then down to the A with a ditch on it. And then back up to the B and come back to the A. So we get an end up with an under and over and back to the A. Let's try that. From the B. Frere Jaca under and over. Three, four. It sounds odd, it really does. It sounds like it's just hanging in mid-air because of some very clever writing. Three, four. I'm gonna find a G. There it is. I'm gonna play that against the B and the C. means you've got to get it off fairly smartly after the C to get it over to the D on the A string. Three, four. The end there, I've got a first finger to open string slur. My go-to ornament is a roll. Let's try that with the double stopping at the start. Three, four. Three, four. And finally, just for the fun of it, that B that I roll down to the A, I'm going to flick the B. Two ornaments in close succession. What it's saying is, listen to the B with a flick, and then it's blurring the change to the A. Let's just try that. Um, so that bar starting on the A, under and over. Three, four. Three, four. From the double stops, G and a B. Three, four. Three, four. And it does sound a little bit all on its own. And this is because there's, a, there's a, like a little dovetail going on here, whereby the end of the first phrase, the key phrase, actually feels like it also belongs to the answer. So I'm just going to get my screen back. There it is. So what we do there, I'm going to go from the open A. Three, four. So we've got the open strings, then threes and ones. Keep the third finger still, put the second finger on the A string. And invariably with double stops, there's one note to focus on. For me on this one, I am blocking. I am blocking the fingers down. I think I can trust my first finger to go down. And indeed, when it goes down, I'll be honest with you, it's spanning the fifth. You're getting this. Three, four. And then um, I block the second and the third onto the D string in primary. So you get this. I'm going to do it. Um, in this position, yeah, from, from there. So you get open strings, first finger spanning the fifth, second and third, blocking down in primary, clean on the D string. And that's mm, close, close. So 
Together they sound and. Then my second finger comes back to C natural. That wasn't very good. That's better. So I'm concentrating on blocking, but it's the third finger that I'm concentrating most on. I can feel that first finger anchoring and spanning the fifth. So let's try the key phrase with the big anacrusis getting to that same place and the answer. One, two, three. and get the low mordant in the key phrase again. Two, three. One more. Two, three. Grand. And it continues on. After all of that double stopping, I play this one to start with cleanly. It's the key phrase again, starting on the C now, on the first beat of the bar. Three, just as far as the A this time. Three, and it was the last time. Three, four. Okay, and with the lower mordant, three, four. And I'm going to play the C against the E, just simply by lifting the finger and trusting the E. Three, four. Which brings us to the second answer. Big anacrusis. G, E and down to the D and up the octave. And after that, it's hauntingly familiar. It's the same answer from the A part. Three, four. Let's do that key phrase, starting on the C, on the head of the bar, and the second answer. Three, four. The C part, the B part. There's so many C's. The B part with a big anacrusis, nice and steady, twice through. Two, one, two, through at the start again and play along with it with all of those ornaments. <laughs> 